To bring about the social and technological changes essential for a more sustainable future, we need a richer understanding of how these changes occur. One theory about change that is relevant for addressing complex issues like climate change and peak oil is the multi-level perspective of sociological transitions, or MLP for short. MLP provides insights into how one technology has transitioned to a radically new one to fulfil a social need. Let's look at how that applies to the car and personal transport. The central idea of MLP is that a technology, such as a car, does not exist as a discrete entity. Rather, as the car became a dominant means of transport, the car develops interdependencies with social, technical and institutional factors including production and supply chain systems, car users, regulation and infrastructure and culture, creating a system called a socio-technological regime. The factors in the interdependencies in this regime over time lock society into the dominant technological solution. So how does this happen? First, as a technology like the car matures, people working in the industry, the car designers, research managers, engineers and so forth, tend to develop common assumptions, knowledge, beliefs and habits about what are possible and legitimate transport solutions. Second, car manufacturers and their suppliers will try to protect their investments and market share. The economies of scale that have developed in producing cars also prevents new transport technologies competing with them. Third, financial investors and insurers of technologies are often sceptical of new technologies, making it difficult for innovators to get financial capital. And in New Zealand, this is particularly so for the commercialisation stage of new innovations. Fourth, the built environment, such as suburbs and roads, have co-evolved with a private car. Oil was cheap up to the early 1970s, which led to major motorway expansions and the creation of suburbia around many cities, and today most of us rely on private cars to drive to work and get around. As the built environment is long-lived and expensive to change, we get locked into a dependency on private motorised cars. Fifth, our lifestyles and attitudes co-evolve with the evolution of the car as the dominant means of transport. We've got used to driving where and whenever we want, and expect to continue to do so. And this influences which transport technologies are seen as socially acceptable. We have collectively created symbolic associations with the car, reinforced by media and popular culture. For example, cars are symbols of individual freedom and successes, while wearing Lycra and riding a bike is not. Finally, even when we want to switch to another transport option, we develop habits and routines connected to our cars which we find hard to break. And then there's public policies such as taxation and regulation which also co-evolve with the dominant technology, often creating an uneven playing field for other technologies to compete. In New Zealand, policy has privileged motorised cars by not charging drivers all transport externalities, for example, the public cost of vehicle-related water and air pollution and carbon dioxide emissions. So, a new transport technology does not just have to compete with the car, but it has to compete with the whole system of social, physical and institutional factors that have co-evolved with the car. And this tends to lock society into the technology trajectory, even when it has become suboptimal. So, how do radical technological innovations succeed? Well, First, the current transport system has to be disrupted. Pressures and events at what MLP refers to as the landscape level occur and put pressure on the current system or regime. Pressures may include changes to society's dominant values and beliefs and events such as wars and natural disasters. For example, growing concern over climate change has gradually pushed climate change onto political agendas raising consumer concern and creating policies which collectively disrupt the car's symbolic and financial position. These landscape disruptions create windows of opportunity for new and radical innovations to gain market share. Radical innovations are often referred to as technological niches which develop in protected spaces within the regime. But if a niche is not mature enough when a window opens, it won't be able to take advantage of it. Timing is critical. If the niche is mature enough, then it may either replace the regime by competing with it, for example electric public transport, or be subsumed into the regime as a means of reducing the landscape pressure, for example hybrid cars. This latter adoption, however, might over time push the incumbent regime trajectory in a new direction, for example further stimulating electric vehicle development. Why is exploring different theories of change important? 
MLP illustrates that it's not just market prices or R&D subsidies which constrain or stimulate radical innovations, but that an interdependent network of physical, social and institutional factors shape innovation and sustainability transitions. When we develop a richer understanding of how social and technological change occurs, we can stimulate new ideas to create change for a sustainable future, for government policy, for business practice and innovation, and for communities. Be part of the discussion. We would welcome your thoughts.